All right. Happy Wednesday! Are you guys ready for the best show ever? Ever! Uh, ever! Welcome to Date Now with Connie and Chrissy. I'm your host, Connie Henriquez, and my crazy co-host, Chrissy Bo. That's me, guys. <laughs> Dude, how does it feel to be here on a Wednesday night? It I don't like weird. it. I, I know I, I say, I don't <laughs> like it. What do you mean? You know? When we go to Miller's, our friends aren't there it's now. It's a little different. It's still it's fun. Cool. I know, but che it's like cheers. Everybody knows our name when we walk in. They, they all cheer do. for us. It's just a different bunch. No one's there. Come on. I don't I like it. I should have did a quote today about stop complaining. <laughs> you did that already once. I know. I think I thought you'd get the hints. Come on. <laughs> I miss Mike Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah, he was there. He was there. He was there in spirit. So, dude, all right. So, come on. What, what are we up to? What have we been doing? Well, we went to go see Elamore. Uh, what was it? A week ago or so. We went to see them. Our favorite band at, on Long Island. Uh, Painters. We had a great time. Vicky I love has that the place. Pictures. It's a good yes. shot. Yeah. And we actually had them on as a guest last week. They were amazing. I love them. They did a really. Oh, great there we job. are. Oh, there. Yeah. That was when I was starting to lose consciousness. That's that was when I, I grabbed Natalie up to the front when they were playing. Uh, oh wait, who's that? No, not wait, yet. Wait, that's JT. That's not yet. Yeah. That's not yet. But that's okay. And then we hit up JT's Cafe. Yes, and JT's Cafe is a new cafe which just opened in Blue Point, New York. That's right. The owner of JT's, our favorite bar on the water. Where we hang out during the summer, so we have a cool spot to hang out before summer begins. That's right. And then we had date nights, dad's birthday weekend. So, yeah, so how crazy is it? I did not realize that both our dad's birthday I was know. this weekend. Our, both of our dads are Aries. Exactly, which that says a lot. Your dad's was on Sunday? And what I Yes, on Sunday and yours was when? Was that? My dad was on Monday, the 11th. Right. So what I love is... There's you and your dad? I put the pictures, and like our pictures are totally different. So your family is very serious. You have the cake, which is great. That's my dad and I. And then... There's my dad. Shout out to BB. There's your family. He was the 82nd Airborne Paratrooper, so he always has a cake made I up. I saw that, and I, it said Brian. Why did it say Brian? Because that's his dad? name, but I call him BB. Okay. And then there's my family, who's a little bit more crazier with the, that picture and how we do cakes. Yes. How many cakes did you get? And there's my, there's my uh, nephews and my brother-in-law yeah. that we're going to have on the show to give the male perspective. One day. One of these days. Exactly. And there's my family shot. Wow. Have you have a, a large group, family. We have to do a group family shot. Wow. That's just the way we do it. Me and you have to do one. We do. Of just me and you. Exactly. <laughs> It'll just be me and you. Where's Pumpkin tonight? He's actually here somewhere. He's going to make a guest appearance Oh, he's at some here? Point. Yeah. He's here again? I didn't he's hear him here. whimpering. I know. Well, because he's sleeping. So that was fun. I can't believe our dads both are Aries. I know, which is so interesting. So we maybe had similar childhood experiences with their uh, yeah, parenting about styles, it. huh? Maybe we could go to therapy together. Possibly. <laughs> maybe <laughs> Rob similar issues. Could, uh, <laughs> our therapist today could help us out here with some childhood issues. No, because Rob is going to help the girls out there That's right. and possibly the guys on amazing dating and relationship advice. He's right? going to help me. I'm going to be calling him at 2 a.m. Rob! I got this problem. What do I do? Rob, remember me? Remember me for the other night. <laughs> so we had um, our dad's birthdays uh, this weekend. Yeah. And plus, which I'm really excited, and I just want to give a big shout out. You went to my, a charity? Yeah, we went to a charity. Actually, um, back in the day, a couple of years ago, actually like 10, I did what? a Hamptons house with mm. Brand, uh, Brandon Cawley, and he actually lost his brother in 9-11. And so every year they do a charity, which is the firefighter fundraiser for Michael Cawley. Okay. I got that right. And so um, it was last Saturday at Mulcahy's. Oh. And so we were able to go and kind of celebrate and just, you know, just give back. And again, Brandon's an awesome Very guy. Nice. I've known him for years. And uh, we did a Hamptons house together. So Very nice. shout out to the fund, Michael Cawley's um, Firefighter Fund. Was there a band? The there charity? was. There was New Life Crisis. Do you know them? No, I never saw them. Yeah, no. they're actually really amazing. They're there every year. All they're right. doing a great job. That was nice. Yeah, so we had a really interesting weekend. It was actually quite fun. I know. And then we, we have a lot on going Wednesday. on. Yeah. And we got the Pink Tie uh, event coming up soon, which so, I can't wait. Exactly. So if you're we not. We never went. We did not go last year because we had another event. That's right. So uh, if you did not get your ticket, go to pinktie.org. Yeah, you better and hurry we will up. we'll be there with a bunch of our peeps. And, uh, and Big Shot will be performing. So I love, love them. Bill, the Billy Joel yeah, cover Billy band. Yeah, Billy Joel tribute. Yep. This will be very, very I can't cool. wait. It's going to be cool. All right. Maybe well, maybe my soulmate's there. I'm going to ask Rob. Maybe. <laughs> you never know. Maybe Rob knows. I'm going to ask If him. you're interested in being her soulmate, show up. <laughs> Be wearing pink so I can <laughs> notice you. <laughs> so you stand out. All right. So what's your uh, start, start loving, loving life? life? Tip of the day is don't settle for less than you deserve. I love that. Damn, right? That was one of my questions to Rob. 
That's Thanks for stealing well, his He'll question. go into more detail, I'm sure, <laughs> but how interesting is that? How many times people settle for what, what A lot of people do that. That's they the do. problem. They do. And what's interesting is you don't have to. How crazy a concept that is. But people get impatient with waiting, so they take what, what's they given They do, to them. but this is what they don't realize. If you put out to the universe what you want, mm -hmm. and then you settle for less, then you're saying to the universe, I'm not really clear about what I want, because if I was, I wouldn't be taking what I have now. That's true. So if you're going to be clear, which is the best way to be, because mm -hmm. clarity is power, you just want to be really clear so the universe can deliver what you want, and that way, you can not settle for less than you deserve because you don't have to. I love that. You love it? I love it. Now, I want to hear about your bestie because I saw his head to do a flip-flops or something. <laughs> no. <laughs> it has to do with your feet. Yeah. When you're getting a pedicure. I love this, actually. When you get married, I'm going to get you this. Thank you. Uh, it's called Dip Into Pretty. So you know how those you get those ugly foam separators uh, when you're sitting there? Yes. Who wants to look at that and right. walk around with those things, whatever? Right. Well, now this website, I, I always say this, but I wish I would have thought of this. Of I'd be a millionaire right now. So it's called Dip Into Pretty, and they're pretty little separate uh, separators for your toes while you're getting a pedicure. You can get flowers, ice cream cones, jewels. They have a whole bridal section. So when you're getting married, I'm going to get you one. Thank you. So wait, where do <laughs> you get it from? Dipintopretty.com. And then and you carry them with you? Did we show the picture where it shows the packaging that they come in? Yeah. So they have a whole bridal line, like I said, and they make a great, I would, if you were getting married, I would get this as a, as a or if I was getting married, I would get it as a bridesmaid <laughs> gift to my okay, bridesmaids. Yeah. Uh, you can use it for party favors, or we already showed all of them. Yeah. Did you see the one with the feet? Yeah. All right. Well, whatever. So that you was very, very so quick. So wait, so you bring it to the nail salon with you? Yes. You purchase it. Okay. It comes in that little package you saw. Okay. P purchase whichever ones you want, and then you bring it with you How every adorable. time you go to get a pedicure. So then you can look at pretty... Lips on your toes. Lips. You can look at jewels. You can look at ice it. cream cone. You can look at flowers. So when you go like shopping after the nail salon, which I sometimes do in flips, like in the winter... Right. That's I always wear those ugly flip-flop things right. that they give you, where your foot's falling right. out but of it's them. Like you're actually walking barefoot, yeah. but you're not. Right. So that would be great. So you have these cute little things on your feet. So it looks exactly. like you did it on purpose. Exactly. I like it. What a great idea. And That's what are they fabulous. like? They're like $12. I love it. Dipintopretty.com is the website. We love it. Isn't it a great idea? It is. We have to get them. Why didn't we think of that? We like got to think of something. Same reason why we don't think of the same thing you do oh, every week. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I hate researching this stuff and finding these things because then I get pissed. I'm like, oh, man, that was we so know. obvious. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> Darn it. Eh, whatever. We know. I'll ask Rob what my problem is, why I'm not manifesting what I want. <laughs> <laughs> why you can't come up with these amazing ideas on yeah, your Rob, own. Yeah, Rob, why am I not coming up with these ideas? I love it. All right, I so can't cool. wait to ask him. We're going to be back with the amazing Rob Liano, Rob Liano. best-selling author. And we're going to be back in a few minutes. So grab your Tito's and fill up. Well, on a Wednesday, I don't know if anyone's drinking. Grab but your Tito's. Give me we a are. break. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Now, you know it's ultimate big bad and bold piece, colorful roll with a scalibur. Yo, this is Marlon Green with AKA Ultimate, and I want you to watch Date Night every Friday night at 7:30 with Connie and Chrissy. Blah blah, you know it's ultimate. <laughs> I love it. Blah blah. You know Dad, where do babies come from? Uh, oh. Well, there's a, uh, th th there's that big, shiny rocket ship. That's right, it's filled with babies. Babies of all kinds. And when the shiny rocket ship penetrates, mommy and dad goes, uh, oh, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, and when the time is just oh. right, there's a space launch. All systems go. Babies of all kinds. Released all over the place. Yeah, Africa. Uh, it, well, mommy's baby Landia. That's right, it's filled with babies. After an amazing nine months, babies. And that, son, is where babies come from. But Jake said babies come from planet. Baby Landia. You go, play with us on the bus. Wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. Wheels on the bus go round and round. Dad, where do babies come from? Uh, oh, well.
Yo, yo, what's up, y'all? It's just me, GMC, in the place to be, the greatest MC in history. There will never be an MC greater than me. And right about now, the only place for you to be is with the one and only Mad House <laughs> TV. You are the best. Yo, yo, what's up, y'all? It's just me, GMC, in the place to be, the greatest MC in history. There will never be an MC greater than me. And right about now, the only place for you to be is with the one and only Mad House <laughs> TV. You are the best. If someone and we're back. we're back! We're back with Rob Liano. Now, you've been on CNN, ABC, CBS, all the main yeah. networks. Nice! I, I've been published. Everybody in, wants uh, you. Well, hopefully. And here you You're are now on date night. night. I guess it's perfect fi fitting for date night. Everyone wants Of course. You. I, I feel like <laughs> we're course. actually on the dating. What's that? The, the, newly the, show? the newlywed show or something. The newlywed thing show. When it, you know what I mean? Like we're going to dating game. That's it. The Where's your game. girlfriend? We're going to start quizzing you and her. Yes. She's, uh, you give un she's unable to watch, so it should be fun when she Aww. watches the replay. She's in school. Oh, Aww. Yeah. Well, she's here in spirit. When Absolutely. you were on all those channels, CBS, CNN, ABC, were you giving dating advice when you were It was on? actually, I was published on their websites from stuff I've oh, written very and cool. okay. some of my insight, if I can, may call it that. Yeah, so. <laughs> it is. Your insane. amazing yeah. stellar advice. Come on, Ryan. Well, and we'll you're see. a best-selling author. What did you write first before we get into our great advice? I co-authored this book with Brian Tracy, who is one of I my love favorite him. success business yeah. sales gurus. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, my picture's on the back. It is? Yeah. Uh, see if you can spot me. Oh my God! We How got you. Find you yeah. quickly. I, I I'm sure you're the most handsome man on here. <laughs> ah, you're so sweet. That's right. You should be on the cover. I found him. All right. There you I'm go. gonna face it. So right. we'll and it's, it's, it's basically <laughs> uh, strategies to have your business explode in a struggling economy. Mm. It's still relevant because you know the economy isn't where everyone would like you exactly. to be. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But my dad always told me create your own economy. Exactly. So, right. I love your dad. Yeah, yes. Let's my, bring my him on dad the show. has a quote in the other book. I used one of his quotes because oh. he's a super positive guy. I guess it rubbed off on me. But the oh. other book is Pick Me Up When You Feel Down. It's a fourteen hundred over fourteen hundred motivational quotes. I love the name of that. For a day for a year. That Breakfast you made lunch, up or yeah. it's quotes from No, I went through like six thousand to narrow it down to ones that were uncommon and really made you think and resonated and oh, maybe aha that. moments and hopefully make you a little uncomfortable. So, great. <laughs> so your dad, you too, you know. your dad's what influenced you to become a life coach, would you say? Or? No, actually, he's the one that influenced me in my sales journey that mm. actually led to life coaching. So, yeah, interesting. But you were brought up in a very positive household. Yeah, he was my biggest fan, drumming at 15 years old, driving me to gigs. So, yeah. Wow. Well, and, yeah and my mom also drove me to drum lessons. And, that's what makes aww. it interesting because yeah. you're a life coach, but you're also very musically inclined. So, you play, play the drums, right? I love music. Yes, I'm the, I'm the prototypical drummer because I drum up sales. And that <laughs> is, I like that's that. Right. I guess that, that's was awesome. yeah. that was awesome. That was good. Yeah, that was well, good. I looked up the definition of drum and I was like, wow, that's pretty funny. That's great. And on my baby picture, I have a phone. So, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Where can we see you perform? Before we get to well, actually, the I have I've been I've been taken off a little bit from drumming, and I've been doing a lot of music remixing, production stuff like that. Oh, in, cool! In the home studio, which is really cool. Oh man, so you can't go out and see you perform. Uh, you possibly this summer, a friend of mine said he might be calling me for some gigs. So yes, like, you know, that's yeah. great. Yeah, I hope date you'll night play, in the house. I hope you'll play a you little uh, Phil night. Collins yeah. or. I'll wear, I'll wear my other pink shirt. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I know you look. First of all, you're the best dressed guest we've ever had. Thank you you get the award. We have very amazing, adorable guests that I know. show up. But Rob is very adorable. But Rob's yeah, shirt, I mean, the uh, what he's wearing, I love it. Thank you. So let's just jump right into it. <laughs> of course. <laughs> because yes. I yes. feel like you got a lot of advice to give. And a, not a lot of time. <laughs> and not a lot of time. Yeah. And I might be calling you at 2 a.m. Right, but no booty when calls. When I'm teetered up. <laughs> no booty <laughs> calls. This has a girlfriend. I'm Come not going to do that. I'm going to. And I'll tell you, my phone is always on Do Not Disturb. The minute oh, I go to bed. Yes. Wow. Rob's <laughs> Do anyway. Not Disturbing yeah. Me again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I learned that early on, definitely. All right. Well, I'll FB message you. Yes. So <laughs> how do we attract Mr. or Mrs. Wright and keep them? Okay. So the first part is really interesting, and, and I could actually reference my current relationship because I right, literally go. found the girl of my dreams, and you'll appreciate this. Aww. In 2009, I wrote a list because I read some I books. love lists. Yeah, I'm I, the I queen read of some lists. Books. Yeah, and it said, it said literally 
everything that you want, even if it's something stupid. So I wrote 29 things that nice calves, you know, cool accent. Calves, bro. Yeah, I, I'm a leg guy. <laughs> I'm a button leg guy. Okay. <laughs> anyway, not that I don't like the other part. Right. Good. But, yeah, so I, I mean, just to give you an example, I wrote down these, like, some things that would be, like, almost superficial. Right. But I didn't care. It was, like, every, every quality. Forgot about it. Totally. Mm. The girl I'm with now is 28 of 29. That's what? Amazing. And I don't remember what the other one is. I have to find it because everyone's like, what's the 29th one? I'm like, I guess it doesn't matter now. But it was really I literally planting the seed mm -hmm. and then allowing it to grow. Because Earl Schof was another, we were talking earlier about my favorite motivational speaker. Yes, we were. He said it's a lack of faith for a farmer to plant a seed two weeks later, dig it up to see if it's growing. Mm -hmm. Right? You're right. So what do we do? We plant the seed, but we don't let it grow. You know, we always, because we're trying to rush it and we're anxious and we push on things. And this never works out. It blows up in our face. That's so this, very true. I just tabled it and let it marinate. And all of a sudden I found her. I was like, wow, she's literally like got all these amazing qualities. And I found it when I was changing from one computer to the other. And I was like, oh, my God, you have to see this. So, Rob, how did you meet her? Like, where, yeah. where did you meet her? How did you meet her? Well, she was actually singing background in a band uh, on my birthday f four years wow. ago. Yeah. And then I met her probably a month and a half later at another gig. And we stayed friends for a long time. So you meet her at another gig. And are you just... a Attracted to her at that moment? Do no. you go up to her? Do you talk? like so? How does no? It I, I met her because I knew the lead singer, so okay. it was just an introduction to the whole band. Okay. Mm. And I mean, I thought she was beautiful, yeah, but I was like, she was married to that lead singer. So, okay. Uh, yeah, so, uh, and, and, uh, and now what we were talking <laughs> we, about? Yeah, yeah, the yeah. audience. <laughs> so what we were talking about earlier is is that's one of my deal breakers. So I don't go there. Right. And waste my time. Right. Because again, is it's not in my. Focus and I'm right. not, it's not on your list, and I don't bother. Yeah, it's, it's totally cut off. However, you know, we stayed friends, and then she got separated, and we mm. we still spoke for a year before we went on our first date and got to know each other. Wow, wow. which is huge because you know you need to, you have to get to know people. Of course, That's true. in this day and age, though, people don't allow time for that, which is one of the big <laughs> challenges. <laughs> yeah, they want everything right now. You know, drive right. drive through dating. Right, I yeah. like that. Or drive, drive by, dating. drive by, dating. drive <laughs> by. Dating. That doesn't sound yeah, like but it's, but it's it. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Hey, now, there you go. Can I go shake with that, guys? So that would be the number one thing: is right. is knowing what you want. A, mm. because it's funny. I use the analogy of a car. Like when you bought your cars, you probably knew what kind you wanted, whether it was an SUV or yep. a, you know a hatchback. Sure. Did you know what color you wanted? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. It was pink, right? No, just <laughs> I do want pink. I yeah. always wanted a pink convertible. No, but, but, pink but people put That's, that much that effort into choosing a car uh -huh. because you're going to drive it. You want to like how it looks. Right. right. But they don't put that much attention into the details of what they want. They'll just say, I want to meet a nice guy or I want a good woman. Right. Mm -hmm. But what is the definition of that for you? Right. Now, Rob, but what yeah. happens, though, <laughs> because people will be clear about what they want, but then they'll continue to date the people that are not what they want and want to make them be the person that they want. Well, that's because they want to be in a relationship more than they want to be in the right relationship. So what do you advise right. those peeps? Oh. <laughs> How much time do we have? Okay. Well, you got a half hour. <laughs> yeah, I, I would really say what, what reflects upon the quote you said is you have to know your self-worth mm -hmm. because otherwise you will always settle for less and then you're stuck in this, why am I in this? And yeah. then you stay in it which is the worst thing ever. And you make the excuses, yeah, but I love him. I'm like, ah, okay, what do you love about him? And they can't, they don't even really have an answer. Wow. But it really comes down to you don't love you. Right. Mm. Therefore, you can't love someone else and no one can ever fulfill your value constantly. That's why Facebook's so popular. Everyone's on their immediate attention. Like, I went to the bathroom. Me too. What'd you do? I mean, it's really? <laughs> yeah, and you see nonsense like that. Right. What I have no, for you lunch. do. I, I, I lost a friend on Facebook because they said, hey, I just got to work. I'm like, well, then you should get to work. And I was like, <laughs> beef unfriended. I'm like, you'd be fired if you work for me. If that's right. the first thing you do is you get to work, log into Facebook. But it's to get that attention. Yep, mm -hmm. they want validation. Yes, and the only challenge is no one under any circumstances can give you all the attention. Mm -hmm. I can't. Mm -hmm. I have a job. I have family. Right. But I have enough love to go around. Mm -hmm. But when people don't feel that they get enough attention, they're going to try and get it any way they can. It's detrimental to a relationship. How do they work on then loving themselves and filling themselves up so they don't feel like they have to get it from outside well, sources? Well, a lot of that people. is you have to, here's a good piece of advice. Listen to the good things other people say about you. Because mm. I remember thinking, wow, I don't know if I can speak in front of people. I don't know if I'll be a good coach, blah, blah, blah. And I would read my testimonials that I had. And I'd be like, I could totally rock this, man. I've done it already. You know what I mean? Like even coming here, I'm like, wow, am I going to do all right? I'm like, 
I can't suck, I guess. I mean, it might not <laughs> be amazing, but I definitely have insight to share. So it's, it's, it's almost a daily battle of fighting that terrible, stupid, lying voice that says you're not good enough, you're, you're yeah. way too much, or you're way too little, you're not tall enough, all that nonsense that gets thrown on you like you'll never be as good as your brother or sister. Yep. And it's all BS, man. It's all other people projecting their crap onto you. I love that. Mm -hmm. And it comes See? from all, it, it'll come from the people closest to you, which is when it affects you the most. But you have to realize that as an adult, mm -hmm. you have the power and I think you deserve to take back your own life and mm -hmm. create what you want. And create what you want. Yep, we're all creators. But see, I, I struggle with that. So say you know what you want and you're, t and you're watching the secret, you're watching all these things, you're following all these people, you're visualizing, you're doing everything, but you're still not getting the results that you want. Why okay. are they not still getting the results that they want? You either have to change your choices or your actions, if, especially if you see it isn't working. Because it's like banging your head against the wall. Mm -hmm. If you start to go, let's say you go out to a bar, you want to meet someone, you start talking, they're a jerk. We've all been there, right? Or yeah. like, mm -hmm. you start talking to them like, oh my God, it's an empty suit. You know? <laughs> an empty they, they were attractive until they opened their mouth. <laughs> and and that's a, that's that's a challenge. But what you need to do is when you have your list defined of what you want, yeah. you can immediately go, no, they're not for me. And then you don't waste that time anymore because mm -hmm. you are willing to be committed and patient to mm. fulfilling you. Right. Instead of like feeling like, I always say when people say, you know, uh, I want someone to complete me. I'm like, oh my God, we want to kill ourselves. Yeah. I'm like, okay, so yeah. you think the I Jerry want someone. Maguire? Yeah. Well, yeah. I was going to say, you, you think I want someone who's incomplete? Right. Like mm -hmm. I'm going to complete you? What am I, that puzzle piece? That can't work because, you know, one and one holes make a powerful two. A piece of one and a piece of another can only make one ish and one and a half. So you want to be the powerful force of two equal people. But it's never like that. It's this balance of like. That's true. Yeah, of me trying to get someone to fulfill me or me right. giving too much of myself, not getting stuff in return. You know, reciprocal things. But we don't learn about dating unless by going out and making mistakes. But we never correct the mistakes, correct. which is the funny thing. We'll just keep going out and being like, oh, well, that person, and blame everyone else. But the common denom denominator in all my dating was me. Right. Right? So I was like, hmm, maybe I'm responsible. So to continue the answer, how do you get them to commit is, I'll tell oh. you, I had to become a prince to deserve a princess. Because mm. 20 years ago, I was an idiot. You know what I mean? I, didn't, I wasn't committing. <laughs> you know, yes. I, I was after maybe one thing instead of the right thing. You know? mm -hmm. And then I realized if I want are. this person who I defined, I need to deserve that. So do and you, I didn't at the time. And it you, goes both ways. Do yeah. you feel like so at that, so you're saying 10 years ago or whatever, you were an idiot. You were just looking for whatever to hook up. Well, so yeah, does you it, know, does it was, come, it was does it come down me. to just you being ready, ready to commit? Like, what makes a guy want to commit? I think there's ready, willing, and having experience and knowledge in what matters in a relationship. Because, mm -hmm. again, we're taught by these terrible examples. Right. You know, parents who fight. Yep. You know, couples who yell at each other. And it's accepted as normal, but it's so far from normal. Two years in big June, I'm dating my girlfriend. We have not had one argument. Oh, right. You were just telling everything, me that everything is before the show. Everything is discussion. And, and that's crazy. You know, I give, she gives, and we I compromise. And, I mean, it's, it's amazing, but it's the way it, it's that's what I envision. That's the way it should be. Yeah. People will argue, though, a good fight is good. I'm like, when what universe does that make sense? <laughs> I'm like, a good what fight. universe are you living Because in? they can have makeup sex. I'm like, well, that means your regular right. sex isn't good. I mean, <laughs> hey, like, that's is, a good point. Is that point. what you need? I mean, really, that's what you need to fuel. Right. Mm -hmm. There's something wrong in that mentality. But again, it's like we, we just get into it, and it becomes a habit. Yeah. So what if somebody keeps picking the same type of relationship over and over again? And That's common. That is common. I have a couple of friends that do that, and I'll just listen and be like, I heard this story five times in the last year. Now at that point and they you keep attracting the same type of person, but they don't know why they keep attracting right. the same it, type of person. It's not a matter of attracting them. It's a matter of why are you keeping them in your life longer than like a day. Mm -hmm. If you allow somebody to disrespect you, you're giving them permission to keep disrespecting you. So when it's your friend, are you honest? Or are you like, oh, I don't know what's going oh, on? I don't he, know what's he, going he on. He'll actually say, you know, you're the most bluntly honest person in my life. But so you'll good. say, obviously, hello, you'll be honest. Yeah. Yep. Oh, interesting. Okay. There's no yeah, other way to be because it's if someone says, hey, good for you, hang in there, and, and allows you to fail, I don't think they really care much about you. So now they're still friends with you after you're bluntly honest? Yes. <laughs> this one. <laughs> like, what? Some, some, no, listen, and it's all, it's all good. Because, because if, if someone you? isn't on that level of uh -huh. growth oriented and open, uh -huh. you know, I, I, one of my quotes that's 
I don't know if it's in that book, but it's definitely on the internet, is um, don't ask for directions if you're not going to start the car. Mm. Because a lot of people ask advice and then they don't right. do it. Right, right. that's so very good. That's like part that. of like it's great to read all these books and but it nothing's effective like the secret. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can envision it, but if you don't act and progress towards it and redirect, you're gonna be in the same spot. Right. You were saying the missing ingredient <coughs> in the secret was action. Yeah. Action. That's they left that out. You can't just think they about left it. that out. Well it's funny because I'm actually working on a blog that says uh, let's see. If it's meant to be, it will be, and other terrible advice. Because <laughs> it's not meant to be that you fail. It's not meant to be that you're upset. Right. But people say, oh, if it's meant to be, it will be. Bull. Then everyone would be happy and have the car they want, the relationship, the career, the house. Right. Because that should be meant to be, right? Right. So why are some getting it and some not? It's not right. meant to be. It's willed to be, and you need to act upon it. Mm. But people will take that as, oh, yeah, okay, I feel better about my failure because, yeah, if it's meant to be, what happened? Oh, well. No, that's crap. I mean, who, wh why? That's not inspiring to me. Right. What's inspiring to me is, yeah, it happened because, what's the quote? Good things come to those who wait, but more comes to those who work their butt off. I like that. Yeah. I mean, you're right. Yeah, because it's a combination of things. And it, again, knowledge is only powerful when it's applied. So I mean, I in the secret, they said believe and envision it, <coughs> imagine it, and then believe that it will happen and expect that it will happen. Okay. Sit on the couch. And then it's well, and how many people, yeah, right, just how many people can we get in here to, that say, yeah, I totally believe I'm going to have it and it hasn't happened yet. And it Correct. never happens. Right. So that's not the full extent. That's why mm -hmm. it was great marketing, but Earl yeah. Nightingale's The Strangest Secret, I feel, is better. Yeah. Think and Grow Rich yep. from, Earl, uh, from Napoleon Hill yep. is better, in my opinion. So, yeah. I mean, it's great, but it's only a component. Yeah. They left the, the key yeah. ingredient out. And Bob Proctor is awesome. So I love Bob not Proctor. I watch a lot of him. Yeah. About the paradigm shift. I love yes. it. Yes. So, hold on. Back to my question, though, because we didn't answer the rest I, of it. I, no, I like, Bob like, didn't like an answer sushi. that you wanted like to hear. Because, <laughs> go ahead, Rob, what? I was going to say, I like sushi. <laughs> <laughs> I never ate sushi, so I, I don't know. Okay. She I don't like, eat fish. She doesn't like seafood. It's a, it's Sorry, a problem Rob. in our relationship. <laughs> yes, it is. Is it? It is. You never mentioned that you wanted to eat it when we're at. Sushi. Yeah, sorry about that. That's you have you Giselle. Have it. <laughs> she has her boyfriend. I have nobody. So anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So somebody who keeps getting disappointed over and over, they start to question their own self-worth. They're getting, you know, they're feeling there's something wrong with them. That they keep going into relationships. They keep ending abruptly. Okay, so... How do we not get disappointed Sometimes and there trying? is something wrong with them. Okay. But a lot of times, it's, it's, there's, there's things in other people. Okay. That are projected on you. Like, I can't tell you how many times I've heard, oh, I wish I could meet a nice guy. In the meantime, I've had women bypass me for, oh, here's a great example. Okay, good. I lived, at home. I lived good. at home with my parents for a long time because I was on tour as a musician. Right. I was on tour as a speaker, flying. It was basically a shower, a bed, and awesome food. You know, awesome <laughs> of course, it's right? your parents, of yeah. course. <laughs> and if I ever met a woman who I was interested in, and 99 out of 100 times, they would hear that, and they would literally, I've had people walk away from me. So that is extremely limited thinking, and you're only focused on the present moment. Because what if you are someone so incredible that now I say, hey, you know what? I have to get a place. Like, they didn't know. They just assumed, oh, he's a broke loser or whatever. Right. Aww. But they didn't know I could move out at any time. You know, right. Anytime I wanted. But there was no need for it. Right. So it was that type of mindset where you're actually eliminating people for things that may not matter when you really dig deeper into it. Mm, I like that. Yeah, so it's, and it's funny, even I've never been married, have no kids. And everyone who I've dated except my current girlfriend, their friends were like, what's wrong with him? I'm like, oh, so if I was divorced and had three kids, I would be a cat. Right, exactly. Right, because they're, so, they're so not used to somebody <laughs> being normal. Right, instead I waited. So, right. I just said, you know you what, I'm not, I am not going to stay in a relationship that is, this dysfunctional, crazy thing. And if someone is not going to be growth oriented and be reciprocal mm -hmm. and have those qualities, I'm, all, I'm happy already. No one can make me happy. They can add tremendously to my happiness. Right. But only I can make me happy. So it's, it's a matter of focus and I guess And you do, gratitude. you genuinely are a happy guy. I could tell yeah. when I first met you. Life is amazing, You've been man. We're, it's, like I, there's another great quote that says, uh, I always laugh when people say life is hard because I say compared to what? Like, what is it hard? You don't know. Is it hard compared to death? Like, Not but it doesn't matter. Yes, there is thing, There are things that suck, right? We have right. struggles in our relationships, sometimes yep. financial struggles. But there are, we're here. It's amazing. Every day is a miracle that we are able to wake up and do something. So, so I love how positive this Rob, guy is. Rob, what do we suggest to someone who's out there who maybe is dating someone who is not 
specifically what they're looking for? Do they stay in the relationship and wait, you know, like wait it out? Do they end it? Like what's like what kind of advice can you give? You know what my answer is going to be, right? You should, there's, what Dump is the em. point? What's the point of staying in that relationship if it's not what you want? Because then what happens is someone's in that, they meet someone interesting, and then they're in two. Mm -hmm. And it's not fair to all three people. Because so you're saying if someone's watching the show and they're in a relationship with someone that they're like, mm, he's not exactly what I want just to be done with it. Well, it depends on what it is. Like, you know, when you write, a, let's say you wrote a list of things, you have to write the main ones that are deal right. breakers. Like, I can never date a smoker. Mm -hmm. You know, n not get involved with a married woman. None of yeah. that. So if that comes out and you know you find out within a day or two, right? Right. Then I'm like, I'm done. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't even be in that. If there are things like that you could live with because there are some great qualities, mm -hmm. You can accept that because there's good in everyone. Mm -hmm. There are things that will start to bug you over time in everyone, mm -hmm. right? Right. So it's a matter yeah. of what you're willing to accept because, all right, here's a great example. I saw a guest pastor in a church, and he said the most amazing thing that this is like probably 15, 20 years ago. Long day after you his grandkids. You have memory then. <laughs> well, it's things that, that stay with you. He, it was a long day after his grandkids were over, mm -hmm. sits in the lazy board recliner, looks, and there were toys everywhere in the living room. He's like, oh, what a mess. And it dawned on him, without the tremendous blessing of his grandkids, he wouldn't have the mess. So Aww. he'll take the mess. Mm -hmm. So that for me is big. It's like, okay, yeah. can I overlook, you know, the fact that whatever, let's say a guy leaves the toilet seat up, <laughs> you know, is that cool Spider. because he holds the door for right, you? You know right. what I mean? It's, it's really a matter of what is important and mm -hmm. your perspective and perception. Mm -hmm. And I that's what it comes that. down to. You know, it, it is because there's mm -hmm. no one who's going to be absolutely perfect in every way. Mm -hmm. Except my girlfriend. Ah, <laughs> uh, that was good, Rob. Good answer. We love it. Yeah, yeah. Right. But other than that, that sorry, was a good one. Because <laughs> she's taken. He's a I call, smart I man. I call her the last unicorn. I'm not even joking. Oh, that's yeah. so and good. Her I love that. So, yeah. yeah, but not anymore because now she's gone. Gone unicorn. Uh. <laughs> but yeah, but it, but even me, it took me a long time to get that relationship. But I said it, it's it's so worth it now because it is literally incredible. Mm -hmm. There's what no, was about her that <clears> made you say this was the one? Ah. Uh, there's a lot of things. She's just okay. dynamic, talented, mm. brilliant, and you know she's hot and sexy, which helps. <laughs> because there does have to be oh, an attraction, which can segue into online dating. Oh, good! That was my right. next question. Wait, wait, we have to go to commercial. Uh, uh, that was my next question. Hear all about how's, that, this? how's that for a setup? Yeah. Darn it! <laughs> we'll be back in a few minutes. <laughs> There's uh, th th there's that it's big shiny rocket ship. That's right, it's filled with babies, babies of all kinds. And when the shiny rocket ship penetrates, mommy, dad goes, uh, oh, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Uh, and when the time is just oh. right, there's a space launch. All systems go. Babies of all kinds released all over the place. Yeah, Africa. Uh, well, mommy's baby Landia. That's right, it's filled with babies. After an amazing nine months, babies. And that, son, is where babies come from. But Jake said babies come from planet. Baby Landia. You go, play with us on the bus. Wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. Wheels on the bus go round and round. round, round, round.
didn't get I one. I love Rob. Oh, we're why, didn't, why, didn't, why didn't Rob food. get one? <laughs> All right, we're back with I Rob. Didn't, I didn't get the sponsored tea. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I'll yeah, get. Why right. did we even get a mortar? That's deep, horrible. We're doing yeah. deep eddies. All right, sorry about that, Rob. We're empty cups. All right, we gave you nothing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you get nothing. <laughs> okay. Online dating. All right, so we started off with online dating, which is uh, you left off with that, and I actually wanted to ask you about that because a lot of my friends they complain. We, we do the online dating for a few months, and we go off, we go back on, but that it's. Same people, you like, see the same people friggin' year after year. How do we stay hopeful in finding love when we're <laughs> when we don't get anywhere when we're doing the online dating? We still see the same people. We're disappointed when we go on the dates. Okay, too, I'm speaking, a lot of questions I'm speaking, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna try I'm and speaking on behalf of, of all the women that are doing <laughs> the online dating <laughs> and men. Well, like, men have a similar challenge because you know. Do they it, though? Yeah, because they because they you it, what happens is you exhaust these opportunities. Mm. Online dating. I'm kind of on the fence about because A, you're window shopping. You're looking at a one-dimensional photo. If you mm -hmm. like the photo, you'll read the profile. Right. So right. it's all about looks, which I don't care how gorgeous you are over time, everyone fades. So you're stuck with the guts. That's true. But how true. do you get to know I the like guts that. unless you really get to talk to them? Mm -hmm. And when we go into a relationship, it's awesome because we create this vision of who they are, whether it's true or not, right? Mm -hmm. Based on our hope. Yes. Like it always amazes me when I meet someone and say, oh my God, I met this guy the other night. I could marry him. I'm like, you're out of your mind. Yeah, it's so weird. <laughs> I, I know. I'm like, and men will say the same thing. I'm like, oh my God, this is the one. Ten times. Well, so, so far you have ten. You're like, you know, that's not legal, but good for you. You know, like, oh, I don't understand. Because it's that hope. Yeah. That unfortunately overshadows the logic and even what we really want. It's like all of a sudden, boom, we created this person. And then because we've created this, we don't want to say, I was wrong. Right. So you stay in these relationships sometimes that are not good for you. So with the Which online dating do. thing, it's okay if you can get to know someone. And, and of course, people put their real pictures up. That would help. That would <laughs> help. I've A lot of men would say that. Recent pictures. Yeah. Yeah, I have had that experience before. I'm like... Yeah. yeah. Wait, do you say anything? Yeah. Or are you just like, oh... Absolutely. I, I end those dates right do? there. I'm like, you lied... One of my deal breakers. Boom. You have the balls to do that? Uh, are you kidding? Wow. I have had so much fun on dates because I am so brutally honest. Wow. One woman was like, are you like Mr. Happy? I go, yeah. And if that's the problem, I'll be happier when this date's over. No! <laughs> yeah, literally almost verbatim. That's I guarantee. Great. Yeah, because if you don't get my happiness, we're going to Why wouldn't problem. somebody want to be around somebody who's happy? Because they're not. That's strange. Yeah, I've had the funniest things. Like I'll hold the door for people, which I hold the door for my brother when, I'm, when he's getting in my car. Right? Mm -hmm. This is just oh, a habit. Oh, I love that. And I've had someone say, oh, how long is this going to last? I'm like, not much longer. <laughs> no. <laughs> However, yeah, because, you know, you're bringing, you know what it is? We're like blaming other people for experiences we had with other people. Yep. Right. And we're taking out on them. That's very good. Completely unfair. You have to literally mm -hmm. try to get rid of that baggage. Matching baggage is good in case you want to travel, but <laughs> not that when you bring it into a relationship and you're literally punishing someone. For something they didn't even do. So, Rob, that's, that's a, true. That's that a great true. question because that, that is something is. that is very common where a girl mm -hmm. may in the past have someone that has cheated mm -hmm. or she had bad relationships. I've been there. And then she's in a new relationship with a great guy and she's bringing that baggage. So, what do you suggest to her in terms of not sabotaging that new relationship? Like, what can she do? You have to exhale. Because <laughs> I'll tell you what I mean. You have to exhale yeah. and, and really think that this is not that person. Mm -hmm. And they deserve a chance, and I do as well. Mm -hmm. You know, we both deserve a chance because it's funny. I could tell you an exact sequence of events. I, I'm often very busy and ignore my phone. My friends are trained to know they may not get an instant text back. Mm -hmm. In this world of instant gratification, I don't always do that. Mm. And I was a few years ago dating someone. I was like, "Hey, just thinking about you, miss you." And I don't, I don't get it, or I'll look at it and not respond because I'm in love. Uh, what? Man. So well, well, I sent that to you and you didn't respond? <laughs> but you wouldn't do that to the well, girl now what. that you want to marry. Yes, I have. What? what? Yeah, and she does the same thing because we both have lives aside from oh, us. But here's okay. the point I'm getting at. Okay, we want to hear the Because it goes to this one. It says, hey, miss you, and then in big letters, capitals, miss you. Now, that person's <laughs> not telling me they miss me to tell me they miss me. They're they telling me they miss me to get a reaction from me so they feel better. See, that's oh, why you can't date a coach. Right. You can't uh, date a coach because they're always going to want up you. No, no. They're going to be like, I'm on to you. I know where you're going. So their motive is entirely off. I tell my wow. girlfriend I miss her because I miss her. I don't care if I don't hear from her. I, got I want you, her to right. know, hey, I'm thinking about you. Miss right. You. It doesn't, I'm doing it to do it to tell her. You're not waiting that's for a the, reaction. Right, that's the way it should be. For validation. That's the way I would exactly. want it to be. Right. Because that means your motive is off. You want to feel, oh, what, you don't miss me? What, are you too busy, blah, blah, blah. And then I'll 
then the that craziness starts in, right? <laughs> right, because you know, then you, they don't hear back from you. They know that you read the message, too. Right. Sometimes on the iPhone, you could see you could see that oh, it yeah, says right. red, that's and right. you're like that mother effer. But sometimes you, I don't get it's it. It's an hour. Know. You don't I know you read it. What's going on? But yeah. sometimes I wouldn't get it, and I'll see four. By the time I get it, I'm like, really? But so, on some phones, you could see that it says red, so they know that right. you read it, but then you didn't respond. But so it then, won't matter sometimes, which is when I think they're a little crazy. And I'm like, okay, I'm sorry, I'm really busy, like I've told you already. Okay. I can't what? respond immediately. Well, the first you lesson know. is on your iPhone, don't have the read capability yeah, where they can see when you read your text. That's that's see, but that shouldn't that's be true. <laughs> it shouldn't be true. That, that is actually enabling the problem. Do <laughs> not have that on your iPhone. Yeah, because it's great that. to text and tell someone, like, after a first date, man, I had an amazing time. Right. What's wrong with that? Mm -hmm. I like that. that. Yeah, I wish somebody would There should would be no, that. like, one, two-day rule. Right, exactly. You're playing games already. Exactly. It should just be like, if that person can't accept you saying, I had a great time, and they are perceiving you as needy, they are reflecting on past relationships, and they're probably not the person for you. Now, if that person did not have a great time, what's the best way to uh, respond to that text? Oh, that's a challenging one, because <laughs> I'll tell you another date I had where... <laughs> Literally on her first day, she's telling me, how come men can't tell you they don't want to see you anymore? They just stop calling. Mm. And I said, well, probably because bad things happen when you tell people the truth. And, and literally a week in, I was like, this girl's not for me. And I said, okay, I'm going to tell her. <laughs> so I tell her, I think you're really cool. You know, we got along good, but I just don't see it long term. And she went off on me. And I said, this is why we don't uh, tell you. Oh, literally. Wow. So you, you can't ask for that and then not want the answer. And we're still good friends to this day, which is cool. No but way. It was just not that, yeah. It was just not that. Did you give her some dating advice on how not to handle her next date? Probably with that one, yeah. Okay. She was also the one that said, how long is it going to last holding the door? <laughs> what? The and she's hell? awesome. She's actually a great person. Does she have a boyfriend? Currently, I'm unsure. Oh. Yeah. I'm so, unsure. Yeah. I'm, well, you know, I can't keep tabs on everyone. I have a, I have a maybe lot of Maybe she gives us some more advice. Stuff. Yes. Maybe. What are the signs that we can look for that a guy is truly into us so we don't waste our time? You, do you really think you wouldn't know? I don't know. Because sometimes they're telling you one thing, but obviously you don't want to say anything too early. You don't want to, be you don't want to sound like you're overly eager, like trying to rush things along. Well, it it's in the beginning stages. Yeah, it depends on what it is. You, you need to monitor their action. People could say whatever okay. they want. It doesn't matter. If someone says, yeah, I can't wait to see you again, and then never schedules another date, Right. You probably have a problem. Or you don't want to be saying to them, oh, I'm looking to find the person I'm going to marry and have kids with. Like, you don't want to say I that think, too early on in the beginning. I think you don't have to say that because I think that should be a general assumption. Okay. And can be brought up when things are moving along because that is probably the number one that scares guys. Uh -huh. Right. Like, That's... literally, first date, you don't want to, so do you want to have kids? Right. Like, you mean are right you here on the table? I mean, soulmate? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, probably not appropriate on a first date in a restaurant. But, you know, so, so what? I'll take a Tito and do you, you want to have kids? Yes, you want right. twins? Yeah. What I'll do you want? Tito's and a little Tito. <laughs> well, the other problem, I'll take a Tito's and triplets. Thing. This what is what's want? interesting. People would always ask me, don't you want to have kids? I said, what, if, I, if I find a wife, I will ask her. Because mm -hmm. I'm not going oh, to. Oh, like, that was a great well, response. Well, it's interesting because a lot of people say, I want two kids. I'm going to name them, like, you know, Bucky and whatever. <laughs> That's Bunny. a terrible name. And, and it's <laughs> like, well, does the spouse matter at the time? Right. So what if mm. I meet the woman of my dreams and she, A, doesn't want to have kids? Mm. Then I'm, I'm probably okay with that because this is the most amazing woman. What if she does oh. and I don't? Then I need to consider is that something I'm willing to do? Mm -hmm. Probably. Mm. So it's something that you shouldn't really bring up until it's ready. But you should also have a little bit of understanding in what is your scope. If it's a okay. deal breaker that you want to have kids, yeah, you need to find out when things are getting serious, not right off the bat. Why do so many men, though, <laughs> hang out with you for a little bit and then they just disappear? Like, why does that? But they're telling you they like you. They're saying all these. This, this is the common thing I always hear from all my single friends. There could be a lot of reasons. They're like, everything was great there for the be, first couple of weeks. There could be a weeks. lot of reasons because only you think it's great. Right. Okay? Or they could be married and idiots. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're just a thing on the side, which is the thing I can't stand because yep. it's just whatever. Right. We're not going to go there because they, need, they, well, we need, they need a lot of coaching. <laughs> ah, good. <laughs> um, and you don't have time for that. <laughs> but it, it, could be, it, it also could be what we were talking about earlier is if you created that, it was great. Okay. Because sometimes we could look back and go, it wasn't really that great. You know what? You, mm -hmm. like, you know, here's a great way to get to know people is drive in the car with them. See how they react when they're driving. You'll know if people are patient, kind. Oh, when you're the driver? Mm, I when, like that. When they're the driver. Oh, I love sitting the, in a car oh, next to someone. I'm like, watching whoa. somebody. I was like, this guy's a maniac, man. You know, like, because it is. It's like, are they, are they, do they allow people to get in front of them? Are they cursing, screaming? Are they driving aggressively? They're going to be like that with you. 
That's great. And then yeah, also watch hey, how they, that was the best advice well, we yeah, ever got. And then on watch this how show. they treat other people because okay. eventually, like I remember dating this girl where she lied to everybody, her no. boss, her ex husband, her kids. And I'm like, She's lying to me. <laughs> I'm not that dumb and I'm not that great that I'm going to well, be the only person that's not being lied to. Well, yeah, I'm like, eventually she has to lie to me. I'm like, whoa, not <laughs> wow. cool. But we don't want to think that. We're like, oh, yeah, no, they don't lie to me. They won't cheat on me. Yeah, they will. Or if you're out at a restaurant and someone's rude to the waitress oh, I don't or like waiter. That. Yeah. yeah, I think that's so hard. Bingo. That's very telling. Behavior. It's all behavior. And mm -hmm. that means it's going to eventually, when you're not on guard I'm and on your, you. You know, your Boy <laughs> right. Scout behavior, it's going to come out. So you want to make sure you that's can monitor, good which people don't. They're just, because you're all, you know, listen, every time we get in a new relationship, it's like, Oh, it's totally exciting. Right. Mm -hmm. And we ignore everything that That's very should true. matter. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. and, we, and how many people do you know look back and say, oh, yeah, I should have known because yep. this, because of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we didn't want to But know. we didn't want, yeah. Because we want that relationship so badly, which yep. isn't a bad thing. We're brought up in relationships, right? Mm -hmm. Our mother nurtures us or family, and then everyone's in relationships. Right. So it's almost the worst thing ever to be single. Like, I was always the <gasps> single guy at, like, all family weddings. Really? Yeah. Like, so often I would not have a date. Now I love it that I have a date all the time. Aww. But yeah, I would be like the guy who shows up because I'm like, I'm not going to bring like the rent a date. Like one of my <laughs> friends would like, oh, I got to meet a girl because I have a wedding and then he's going to dump her. So he's one of those guys <laughs> so, <clears throat> who now is in a great relationship, oddly enough. So there's probably a certain aspect of, dare I say, maturity mm. when you start. Because when, like I said, when I was like 25, man, I was... Uh, I was an idiot, man. But did you ever get worried as you got older that you weren't going to find the person or you always remained positive that it was going to happen? Literally. For the people out there that are losing hope. Literally, I decided that I'm probably never getting married. You did? Until her. Interesting. Yeah, and I was happy with that. I was like, okay. you know what? And that's probably why I, you met I her. Have a great, you well, absolutely. Gave because because there was no pressure, uh -huh. no anxiousness. You know, mm -hmm. I think the Bible says be anxious for nothing. Mm -hmm. You can mm -hmm. be eager but not anxious. Anxious is like, you know I guess coming from derivative of anxiety, right? Anxious. Yeah. So I think it was important to just meet someone naturally. Like when you're trying mm -hmm. on an online dating thing, you're like trying yes. you know, too hard. It's not like getting a job and other things where you need to go out and put resumes. Right. Some things that are better to allow them to naturally happen. So you think online dating people shouldn't even be doing it? They, should, <clears throat> they shouldn't be so focused on it. Don't be so obsessive about it. Just focus well, you on your own anywhere. life. And then yes, no. Let focus it on you and your growth. Mm -hmm. That's the whole thing, really. Because again, we get taught these terrible things. Like I was a really skinny kid with glasses. I got bullied. And I I'm, can't believe you were bullied. Do you wear yes. contacts? Yes, or I'd be blind. You're Although a very now I'm fine. Guy. And you know what's interesting? Thank you. That's so yeah. amazing of you. Because I was so self-conscious up until literally this woman that I'm dating Aww. about ever being seen with my glasses in public. Because I would be very athletic, have tape in him like the movie Nerds. Literally, <laughs> I was called Four Eyes. Um, Point Dexter, by people, one person in my family. Like no. You, yeah. So it's it's things like that that make you have a low self esteem, and it affects mm -hmm. everything in your life. Yeah. So when you work on you, and start to say, hey, you know what, I'm awesome because you are, you are. Everyone in here is oh, in their own that. way, but we compare ourselves to people who we shouldn't. Like yeah. I'm going to compare myself to like, you know, someone who's who's destined to be a football player, and right. I always love football, but. Was it, it wasn't for me, but I'm going to be like, oh, I wish I could. No, it's right. just self-defeating. But you know what? I could do other stuff, right? Like I can come here and coach, hopefully. You're yeah. a drummer? Yeah, I could, I could do music. Yeah. And people will be like, oh, man, I wish I could. You could if you really, really want to. Like John mm -hmm. Maxwell. You guys probably know John Maxwell. Yes. Great author, leader, right? <clears throat> he said he hates when people say you could do whatever you want if you want to badly enough because he said, I can't be a ballerina. So if you've seen John, he's a kind of paunchy guy in 5'10". <laughs> But the point is that I reflect on is he wouldn't want to be a ballerina. But what he is passionate about, he can accomplish, and he did. Mm -hmm. So it's things like that. You don't say something, yeah, okay, you can do whatever you want. Yes, you can. Muggsy Bogues, five foot four, professional. I loved him. He player. was my favorite. Yeah. He I, was when my I speak, favorite. I speak in schools, uh, for, like to graduating classes or like, you know, some, some kids, and I bring that up all the time because there's always someone yeah. says, I want to be a basketball player. One, yeah. one room, they laughed at him. I said, you're going to love what's going to be in one of my slides. And, and they don't him. know about him? Well, I guess they're too young. They Some will right. if they know their history, but most today won't. Right. But yeah, five foot four or something. And, and, he and he wasn't me. just a novelty. No. He was a pretty I know. badass. He was my favorite. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so it's, it's proof that that was his vision. Do you think a lot of people told him it won't happen? Right. So do you think a lot of so, people tell us you'll never find the right guy? That means they won't. It doesn't mean you won't. So you just touched upon something. So people have limited beliefs. How do we 
get through the limited beliefs. Yeah, I know you're tough walls to Chrissy block. Loves How much time do you have? I love to ask every guest, <laughs> and we asked Bob Doyle from The Secret. He wanted okay, to kill so me. Okay, where, so where, <laughs> what I would say is, where did you learn the limiting beliefs? And I'll give you an example. We're okay. born. We're born with only two fears, according to psychology. Oh. If you're not familiar with it, it's a fear of falling and a fear of loud noises. I didn't know that. Every were the other only fear two fears. we've learned. Okay. So you can unlearn it. So limiting beliefs you've learned because when you're a kid, what is it like? Oh, I want to be president. I want to be a cowboy. Right. And everyone's like, awesome. And you get older and say, hey, you know what? I want to start my own company. Why do you want to do that? Mm -hmm. Right? Or you know what? I want to move to Europe and meet you know, the man of my dreams. Why do you want to do that? It's very interesting how as a kid there is no limits. I know. Why? What's That's the true. difference? It's what we've learned by our own mistakes, by following other people's advice. How often have you, followed, you had your gut say, I don't feel like this guy's right, but you go out with him anyway? Yeah. Why? Of course. You need to, that gut is the most important thing. Okay. When it's not clouded in prior bad experiences and emotion. Or most people little, don't know how to <clears throat> listen to it. They're not sure of what it is. Is it just their own self saying, oh, maybe I shouldn't go? People yeah. aren't, you know, in tune to that. So they don't know. Is that my intuition telling me you, not you, to go? The only way to know is it, it is almost sometimes after you act on it or don't, right. unfortunately. But you should start to get very in tune with yourself over time. It's almost like a sharpening a tool right like I know always I'm like no I'm not gonna do that gig or I will do that gig you know when I get like I, I, okay. I just got hired to officiate a wedding which is gonna be really cool because oh, oh, they're, they're already married they're already married yeah so I don't need a license and they wanted like a Tony Robbins oh, and I like, love Tony I was like I don't know if I should do this gig and, and it was the wrong gut and what I did was I stopped for a minute and I envisioned it and then I decided to see how I felt envisioning me doing it and it was like, oh, my God, I'm going to be able to impact somebody's wedding, the biggest day of their life, when they do the ceremony. I'm like, that's awesome. I'm doing it. So when you start to think about, okay, there was a great book, I think, by Jack Welch's wife, Susie Welch. She wrote, it was called 10, 10, 10. Okay. It's how will this decision affect you in 10 minutes, uh, mm. like, let's say, 10 months and 10 years. I like that. <clears throat> but we never looked that far. It's like, okay, I want to go on a date now. Right. I, want, I, I need to get married. Right. Right. No, you know, that's true. Instead of thinking, okay, how will this affect that? How will this person affect my children when I have them with him? That's huge too. That's true. Do that's I want good. this person to be the father of my kids or the mother of my kids, you know, mm -hmm. based on their behavior? And, you know, it's, it's really just paying attention. Do they complain about everything? Are they accountable for are their own actions? Are they complainers? Yeah. Blamers, complainers, and remainers? Blamers, complainers. Or are they sustainers? You know, that's the way, mm. that's the way I look at it. Really, because, you know, you, you want, it depends on the type of person. Like that person I told you about who said, are you always Mr. Happy? We're probably not compatible, right? So that's why I was like, see ya. Do you think there's <clears throat> a way, are you familiar with getting into alignment? <laughs> because that's another one of my favorite questions. Yeah. So how do we cut through the limited beliefs and get into alignment with what we want and manifest it quickly? She's well, saying, it may she, not be quickly. Our question is, how do I find my soulmate? That's what she's trying yeah, to ask. That's really, okay. <laughs> or create whatever you're looking to create in your life. Okay. Whether it be a dream job, a soulmate, whatever you're looking to do. This will be the simplest thing, and I alluded to it earlier. Okay. Define exactly what you want. Okay. And then define the person that would match that person and become that. Become like that. Like I said, I had to be a prince to get a princess. Mm -hmm. Literally. That's good. Yeah. I like that. So what if you feel like you are work? a great person and you're still not attracting the right person? So I think you need to adjust really either your tolerance level mm -hmm. or your acceptance. Mm of when people don't line up. Like, do you have exactly what you want? The real deal breakers and things. Like looks, personality. Yes. Written down? You yes. Have, yes. You have it all. Yeah. Okay, so when you meet Eric someone. Eric Decker. <laughs> <laughs> he's married, right? Yes. He is. Okay, so see, that's a problem. It's a yeah. deal breaker. <laughs> ah, right. But, but I'm but, saying physically looking, yes. Okay, so that's a good, that's a good yeah. thing. So, but again, you, why was your first thing physical looking? Why was it first? Yeah. Uh, you realize that you said that first. You didn't I say, don't know. What's the first thing I said about my, my girlfriend? Calves. No, no. Did you? When you actually <laughs> asked. Oh, I remember when about when you were calves When you actually asked what she you like, said I said dynamic, and talented, Oh, great. dynamic. I'm and then sorry, the yeah. last thing I said was, and she's kind of sexy and hot. That's true. However, so there's that's something. True. So you may be going after this guy who you're all like, oh, you're right. he's cute. And then, you but sound that's like my sister now. That's what she says to me. I didn't know she had a masculine voice, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but she always says that. Maybe not go for the physical so much. Well, no, you can because there has to be an attraction. Right. Thank never, you. Like, no, Thanks, no one Rob. should lie about that. There, right. You have to be attracted to right. someone. But that's not going to sustain it, without a doubt. So No, I want a kind soul. Well, and she always laughs it. at me when I say that. But I, I want a kind soul. And how do you get to know a kind soul? I don't know. 
I haven't by found taking one yet. Time. You got to take time to get to know them. Instead okay. of thinking this is it and getting all that gushy feeling, because mm -hmm. that happens, you know, when right. you're like, and, and again, we're like, we're like blinded idiots. That's when it, true. And I've been there, man. You know, it, it takes a long time to overcome that and grow and realize, okay, I need to take a step back and say, mm -hmm. yeah, she's hot, but right. who cares? Because I need her to be cool. And even if you're right. lonely and you're like, all right, I like, I like spending time with this person, if they're still not showing you the or behavior right. that you want, well, I'm going to share should... this. How can you be lonely when you have the entire universe with you? Now I love that as well. And now you have an amazing we... right? life. All right, well, explain I mean, that a little bit more. You have the entire... We have 20 you seconds. Have, okay. you have 20 seconds. Come on. All right, so here's the thing. I'll give you one huge tip. Keep what? learning and keep applying, yeah. number one. Can you come back next Wednesday? Uh, I probably can, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd have to check my schedule. Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'll my text girlfriend's you British. She has the accent. Let's bring her the next show. But yeah, so, but that's, that's the whole thing is you literally, how can you be lonely when there's people that love you, people that care? And on downtime, just do things you enjoy, you know, don't mm -hmm. be afraid to go. Get a life. It's called get bold. a life. Yeah. Or be bold, man. You know, the, what does it say? Fortune favors I love it he calls bold. his man. That's the way I talk. It's you know? all right. We, I all right, like dude, that. it's selfie time. I like that, actually. Selfie time. Oh, where I've been with people that call me, oh, man. Are we standing up for this? That's <laughs> right. We're going to stand up for have this. My well, this is so cool. A selfie stick. I, I love that. Like Rob, you're the happiest person I've ever met. Our camera's really? a little okay. off. Yeah, I love you. Okay. You can see the lower our lower portion of our dresses. This is where the height comes challenging. Is this supposed to be? Get his hair in. Get my hair in. <laughs> this is too cool. Well, oh, you're taking like a thousand pictures. There better be one good one. We're pro. I hope there's a good Bob. one. Dang, Are we all guys? Bye. Thank you so much. Uh -oh. Look up Rob Liano. Wait, where do they find you? Oh, just Rob Liano, like piano with an L on the internet. You'll find my blog. And go my on Facebook. Website. He's on my Facebook. website is under construction for a new and improved version. So yeah. Thank wow. you, Rob. We love you. You're awesome. That was awesome. We're amazing.